Simulink beginner series number four. And in this video, we'll be going over integration numerically and also using the clock. So let's make some example models here. Let's go into open a new model here and let's start. So we can drag in a few blocks that we need to create this. Let's go into a constant here. Let's drag in a gain. Let's drag in an integrator. Go to things, drag in a scope, a display, a discrete time integrator as well, and then enable subsystem. Let's also drag in two more math functions that we need, modulus and rounding. So for that, you have to go into math operations here. So let's rounding function there. And the math function here so let's change this to a round and let's make this into a modulus so let's begin with a simple example let's integrate a continuous time signal but first you want to check your solvers settings so i would recommend if you're doing any sort of integration in your model use a fixed step solver it's better you will have less inaccuracies because if it's a variable step, then the step size can become too small and the integration value can become very small or very big. So for now, I have it as 0.1 seconds in the ODE4 with a fixed step size with a one second time frame. I also have a variable defined in the workspace. So A equals to 10. I just defined it there and I'll be using it in the model. So, so let's now do a simple integration. Let's open this one and then set the source to external because you can use a port to define the initial condition. It's better doing it this way because let's say if, it's, if your initial condition is a variable that you can command it's best to use an external port let me make it bigger here so one and then let's copy this one i'll call this a so a is equal to 10 let's also hide the block name so right click format and deselect this one a scope and a display let's connect these two here and let's run this so so you see how it becomes 11 because you have one of one second multiplied by one plus 10. So pretty simple example there. Let's try with discrete time step. So let's comment this one out, delete this one. And let's first do some here. So let's do trapezoidal. It's more accurate. I would recommend using trapezoidal over forward or backward Euler. But based on your individual parameters, you might have to pick one, one of them. Set the source to external as before and sampling time as negative one. That's very important because you have to use a discrete sampling time. So let's zoom this one here. When I run this, you see how it becomes 11.01 and that's cause the integration method is discrete and it's also using trapezoidal. If I use for forward Euler, let's check it out. You see how it's 11 so yeah based on your individual considerations you might have to choose something you can see in, in your scope how it looks so if i zoom in a bit here you can see how it's like steps because it's doing it every 0.01 seconds okay that was an easy case so let's now do something more interesting let's use the clock to kind of customize our integration now this could be useful let's say if you have an application where you want to accumulate a signal but only over a window so you only want it to integrate every maybe five seconds or 10 seconds and then you want to reset it to zero so in this case we'll be using integrator with resets and the clock so let me demonstrate how that works here it's quite interesting let's drag in a few more things that we need a clock let's drag in both so this one is continuous and this one is discrete but you can discretize the continuous one by using zero order hold right there with this clock we have a continuous time clock so to discretize this we have to use a zero order hold and let's also set the sampling time of this one to the simulation time so here i have 0.01 seconds then we can use the modulus and I will show you what I'm going to do here. So I I'm going to drag in another constant there. So I'm going to call this 
n right n so and let me just put a note here so i'll show the block name and i'll say integrate every n time step so let's say n is an integer so one two and so on so i'm going to define n in the workspace here n equals three just like that so we can then use a rounding function to round it and i have this because this has to be an integer let's say if you put 3.5 or 2.7 then you will have errors so you want to make it an integer because every that many time steps it should round and it should do the integration so then so we have n here and you want so you want a time right so let's say if you have five time steps that corresponds to five times 0.01 because that, that's our simulation time so it's like saying k equals five and f equals kt right if you look at the discrete control that's how it's represented so you have to multiply this by the time step so that's 0 0.01 so just like that and we can connect it here so you see what i'm doing here you see that let's say only every time steps that correspond to n this will be a zero so let's say five time steps pass if n equals five and this will be 0 0.05 only then if you modulus them it'll be zero right otherwise it'll not be zero so you have to compare this to a zero here so we can say compare compare to constant let's set this to a zero so essentially this will only be correct every n time step so if it is zero then you activate the subsystem here and then you only pass in the value of the clock so next we can also let's actually delete the top because we don't need it any anymore and let's do, do it again so for this one you will have to use something called an external reset so what this does is every time step it'll do a reset so in simulink you can have something called a, a rising edge or a falling edge a common engineering topic so a rising edge means that something that goes from zero or or less than zero to a positive number so a step is a rising edge right because it goes from zero to something else a falling edge is something that goes from a positive number to zero or less than zero so if it goes from one to zero or one to negative two then that's a falling edge so in my case i'll use a rising edge because the clock will rise right the time goes up time cannot go down so every maybe n time steps here the clock will increment so it'll, that'll be a rising edge so in this case you want to do it this way here the modulus will become positive so in here you wanted to do it this let's also drag in our initial condition there so ic is equal to zero let's make it zero here and the signal you want to integrate for now i'll keep it constant at one so just define it to one there so let me show you how this works and let me also drag in a bunch of scopes so i'm going to put one scope here and we can also put in one scope there let's check what, what we have we have the integrator we have our reset function there and this can go here and then we you can drag in another scope to see what the output looks like so if I the, the sampling time should be in the negative one trapezoidal rising external so this will all looks good and let's run this and see see what we have so we just ran it and n is equal to three in this case so you see how the clock will only increment every n time steps so if I zoom this here you see how every 0 0.01 times n so that's 0 0.03 it goes up because what's happening is this subsystem only enables when this is a correct so if i use the scope here this modulus function there oh it goes from 0 to 1 every n time steps so if i zoom this in more you'll see what i mean so the edge goes up every n time steps right so 0 0.03 it goes to 1 0 0.06 it goes to 1 because this divides evenly by this 
at when n time steps pass. But I can also show you one more way. I can show the signal value and see e equal to zero. So at the start, it's correct at the start because we have zero there. That's your initial condition. It's false here because you have 0 0.01 and then 0 0.03. So it has to divide evenly by that. One more time step, it's still false. And then once I go again, it becomes true, right? Because you have 0 0.n time steps have passed. So if I keep going ahead, false, false, true, because now we have 2n. So 0 0.06 seconds have passed. So that's how this works. And if I go into the integrator here, you can see it looks kind of nice. You see how it will reset every time step. So if I run the whole thing, it resets every n time steps there. So right here, it'll become zero and then it'll go back to where it was. So that's it for the video. And this was a quick example of doing it. I can show you one more thing for the clock. Instead of doing this this way, you can also use the digital clock. And essentially all I have to do is set my sampling time to the number of seconds I wanted to do it. So if I say, let's say, if I say four here, let's see what that tells you. If I scope this out and if I look at the output there, it's not there because the sampling time is too high. So, but if I say 0 0.04, it, it'll go up every 0 0.04 seconds, as you can see. So instead of using this one and this, you can just use this one directly. But I want to show you this way because let's say in a model, if you have a continuous signals and discrete signals, then you can choose. So one may give you an error, so you can have both options available. So with that being said, thank you for watching and I hope you learned something new. I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.